Hey guys, this is Clarice. Welcome to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about Zack Snyder and I'm also going to be teaching you how to make your eyes look a whole lot bigger with this look inspired by the baby doll look from Sucker Punch. So I try to do my best with making my hair look kind of similar to hers. I know she's blonde. I don't have that wig and I don't have the outfit, but you know, I try. So if you're interested and you want to hear more, just keep watching. So on the basis of uh, starting out with this makeup look, I'm trying out a lot of new products. Some of that is why my skin is having a bit peely reactions other than that it's dry. So I've got to learn to work with this. This eye primer that I put on seemed to be quite drying and it's kind of worn off. So we're just gonna see how it works. But essentially the 60s eye makeup look is primarily about creating this, this very dramatic crease line. Um, and it's not nearly as winged out as an era like the 50s, where it was all about that black liner, that black winged eyeliner. The 60s began to, the 60s began to develop this era of straight lined eyeliner or almost angled downward eyeliner. You can think of actresses like Barbara Streisand and models like Twiggy who really popularized um, this 60s eyeliner look. That's very much what they go with for Emily Browning's character, is they really wanted to round out her eye. Personally for my eyes, what I find works is I like starting right here, where my kind of overlapping hood is when I look straight. And I like doing that while I'm looking down so that I'm not stretching uh, my eyelid to be... And with that is when you're doing eyeshadow, especially when you have a, something like hooded eyes, if you are constantly altering the natural shape of your eyes, you will fall victim to misplacing your eyeshadow. You will apply a color that looks like you're putting it on your crease and then you relax your face and you're gonna see that your hooded eyes or your low brow or your deep set crease or monolids cover up all of the hard work that you just did. So that's why it's just best to keep a relaxed face as much as possible when you're doing your makeup. So what I've been doing is I've just applied a transition shade lightly over my crease area and then I took a darker brown shade on that fan brush and then I just applied it and followed the line of that above crease. Now the 60s shape is all about having a deep set crease with a bold eyeliner and long, long thick lashes. So depth is really the key here. As I'm working to build more depth, I'm just slowly adding darker and darker colors of brown. So now I'm taking this even deeper tone and I'm again starting at that inner crease. I'm starting at that inner crease, rounding it upwards to really give it a more circular effect and instead of winking out like most winged eyeshadow shapes we're actually going to be pulling that down now the desired goal for baby dolls makeup was actually said to be a mix of 1960s Bridget Bardot with just a splash of anime. And these were actually notes that were taken from the makeup artist who was given these notes by Zack Snyder. Now, Bridget Bardot was an icon of the 1960s that was most notable in the beauty world for popularizing that sex kitten persona. And that comes with that sexy black eyeliner, big hair and big bangs with a nudie pouty lip. And this look is very quintessential 60s. And even if you look at some of these images, it's really easy to see how the Bardot influence really played a deep role in the conception of Baby Doll. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just taking that same transition shade on that winged eyeshadow brush that I've been using and I'm just running that under my eye. The reason why is because I have these deep set under eye lines and I just find that putting eyeshadow over them as opposed to a concealer really helps just diffuse that creasing and that is inevitable to happen with my own lower eyelid lines. Now on the topic of tools, I've really been enjoying my Scott Barnes brushes recently. I will say firsthand, these are very pricey brushes. I bought the entire kit on a sale and even then it was quite pricey. So of course there are plenty of affordable brushes out there and that's more than okay. No one absolutely needs these brushes, but I will say that if you are someone who loves makeup and you just really, you care about the tools at which you're working with, you can't go wrong with taking an extra cost to put in an investment on a tool that's gonna last you for many years to come, as opposed to something cheaper that might break in a couple of months. So now what I'm doing here is I'm taking the darkest color. This is now the more gray toned base shadow and we're actually starting on the outside and we're working that towards the inner eye crease. 
Now, building up this depth, I noticed that I needed to get an even softer blender brush because this eyeshadow, I genuinely think, was coming more from that eyeshadow primer that I had put on previously that was quite drying. Given that my eyes were already having their own dry fest, this just didn't help, and so it resulted in this eyeshadow looking patchy. So in order to avoid that mistake in the other eye, I ended up just applying the shadow with my winger brush and immediately going to blending. Because I had taken a brush that was less dense on the previous eye, that's what led to that patchiness. So now, as I'm just diffusing and further blending out that deep crease, I wanna let you guys know that there's a reason that we've left our eyeshadow bare. We're just gonna take that darker shade now and run it under our eyes as we're leaving this open space on the movable eyelid because we're gonna be packing that on with a metallic color. Now what I'm doing is completely not period accurate and definitely not what they did on Baby Doll. This is just something that personally I like. This is a technique that was more notable in the 50s that they did on actresses like Marilyn Monroe, where essentially you're taking, you're running a dark eyeshadow shade underneath your lower lash line and you're just winging it out. And so what it's doing is it's creating this almost eye shadow underneath your eyes. And once you put on your lashes, what it gives the effect of is that you have such thick, heavy lashes that the lashes themselves are actually casting a shadow on your lower lash line. And this is just more to give that big doe-eyed effect. Now what we're doing is we're taking a metallic silver shade and we're applying that all over our mobile lid. Now on top of that, I'm actually going in with a frostier white based metallic shadow from the same palette and I'm just putting that in the very center. Now they didn't necessarily do this in Emily Browning's makeup, mainly because her eyeshadow was a lot more frosty. This was a much frostier shadow they placed on her that quite honestly I can't help but think that it was more a product of the 2000s. Those frosty eyeshadows really were everything. And I think that was a little bit more of a contemporary touch from the makeup artist. But for me, I'm doing this in a little similar of a realm to a halo eye, just because I find that that color is really much more enhancing for my own hooded eyelids and really helps give that full crease its full depth effect by contrasting it with this light shadow. So now working with gel liner, I opted for gel liner as instead of pencil and instead of liquid, I've really been enjoying the finish of this Anna Sui gel eyeliner as it's got a really good slip and its formula is matte. And personally, I've just really enjoyed how dark and black I can get my gel liner to look and how really deep it can be. And I just find that it's a bit faster than going through multiple layers of black eyeliner and then covering it with a liquid liner. Now here's a quick tip because I noticed that I had messed up on one of my eyes. So this little kind of a divot that's happening here, that's happening because of my hooded eyelid. So I have to clean that up and then I'm also gonna have to make that a little bit thicker because what's happening is that is coming at an area with my eye crease folds. And because the hood is coming over it, it's changing the way that, see if I, if I lifted my eye, it looks straight. But when I sink it down, it does that. So now I have to fix that but I wouldn't have noticed that if I hadn't done the eyeliner. Because what's happening is this crease line is giving it the illusion that it's sinking down. So now essentially I'm covering and canceling out that crease line that you see, because that's a shadow, because it's a crease that's happening on my eye, on my physical skin. And I'm canceling that out with the black so that you don't see it. And what that's doing is that's giving me a much more even eyeliner angle. Now we're adding in the anime effect. So what we're doing here is a technique that I don't know if it's still considered this or it's still called this, but for me, it's known as the puffy eye technique, where this is very, very common in anime cosplay makeup. It was really big early in the in the late 2000s to the early 2010s, where basically what you're doing is you're applying that same shimmery shadow directly on your under eye bags. And then you're taking an even darker shadow and you're applying that underneath your eye bag, almost enhancing the under eye bag shadow. And what this actually does is counterintuitive as it might sound applying a dark shadow on your dark eye bags is it's actually giving a lift to your eye bags almost almost in like a puffy eye effect 
And what this does is it just helps round out the eyeball because we associate that roundness to our eyes and it by turn it makes it look a little more innocent and a lot larger in perspective. So because of that it's really notable when when people are doing anime style makeup just to go on that puffy eye effect and it was definitely used on Emily Brown and you can even see it in this image. And with a nude eyeliner, you just line in the waterline. To be more accurate to the 60s, it would have been a white eyeliner, but personally, I just prefer the look of a nude eyeliner on my own eyes. Then just continue to curl your lashes, apply some mascara, and then we're just gonna be right on with the rosy cheeks of Baby Doll, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the classic 60s nude lip. So, to wrap this up, because we haven't talked about Zack Snyder yet, all I have to say in regards to the makeup is I'm blocking out and canceling out my lips with using concealer. This is not usually conventional for something like a film or day-to-day -day because it's going to crease and fall into and settle into the little lines of your lips, but I'm doing this because this came right off as soon as the camera cut off, so I did that. Then I put on a rosy colored nude lip and then I shaded it with a darker brown pinkish color on an eyeshadow brush. And this was more to add depth and to really give a more three dimensional effect to my lips. I also emphasized the center with a lighter tone and even dabbed a little bit of bright eyeshadow in front because I really wanted to have that three dimensional nudie pouty lip that I saw on the movie. And then lastly, for the cheeks, there's so many different places for blush placement. And if any of you guys want a video on how blush placement can really alter your features, I'd be happy to do that. But for Emily Browning's rosy cheeks that they did, one, Emily Browning has these brilliant, beautiful round cheeks. This is the moment where actually placing the blush on the apples of your cheeks is gonna give you the best result. By doing that, you need to smile. And then by briefly patting on a nice rose rose toned blush, you're just really going to focus that on the apples of the cheeks and swirl. Then by building up different layers of brighter pinks and brighter tones, you're going to eventually get this flush, this very clear flush like Emily Browning has. And that's what I did on my cheeks. But I really focused a chunk of that blush, almost where you would put highlighter because she really was just packed on with a bunch of blush. And personally, I just think it looks so beautiful. Looking in just right in that nose, on the cheekbones, on the edges of the cheekbones. Again, just adding more dimension to everything. And then I'm gonna be right back with some parting words. Hey guys, so I'm back. So I just popped on some lashes. I did some final touches and I did my hair in the best way that I could to be kind of similar to Baby Doll. I, I know she's blonde. I didn't want to get a wig. I also didn't want to pay for a costume. So this is what you get. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that you learned something in regards to makeup about learning how to make your eyes look bigger. Like I told you, the lashes really do make a difference, both with false lashes and without. So. I hope you enjoyed. You guys have a great day. Thanks and bye bye. Make a movie Monday. Make a movie Monday. Make a movie Monday. Make a movie Monday. Make a movie Monday.